I, you know what I do sometimes? Pro professional, like, professional uh, video guy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we're still at CBIT 2017 at the Zmorph booth and I know you guys exist. I've, I've heard you with your 3D printers and uh, the CNC tool heads on there, but you guys are showing some, some very impressive stuff. So what is like your philosophy? Why are you doing it and, and what are you doing for those of you uh, out there who've never heard of Zmorph? Yeah, well, the philosophy from the beginning was like, you know, we want to bring the uh, personal desktop fabrication to creative people that need it. And, you know, people, um, it actually comes from my, big, my background a little bit because I, I've been working as an architect for seven years in 3D modeling and I, I've been preparing models for digital fabrication and I couldn't find a machine that can do uh, CNC milling, laser cutting and 3D printing in one box. So I started building my own and you know that, that's how it started. But why put it all in one box? Why not have just one dedicated machine for 3D printing, for laser cutting that, that does it? you know, perfectly, why, why make one compromise machine? Well, mostly, there, there are two factors. Uh, one is the cost factor, and second is the space factor. So if you have a small lab, um, you, you don't have space for that many machines, and they all cost uh, a lot. That's like an expensive thing uh, to have three different machines, or four or five. So now we have one in, in, in one box. That's also pretty good for classrooms and, and fab labs because even if you have fewer machines, you can you know, serve more people and you can switch to different subjects and pr produce various things. Obviously, your, your main first starting point is, is 3D printing. Um, yeah. doing so. so let's just take that as a given. It's a 3D printer, we know that. There's, there's not much special about that. You, you are showing some cool stuff. We're gonna get to that later, but Let's start over here. So we've got a CNC mill, actually milling something out of uh, what is this birch birch plywood? Yes. Yeah. Um, what what can you what can you do with this? We we've got some PCBs, but I don't think those are those are laser etched. Probably. They are laser etched, and then the outline is cut. But I think the the one of the most important things is that we can uh, we can cut in three D. So uh, the uh, it's not just like. 2D cutter or 2.5D cutter, but uh, you can do um, full shapes and you can use the same models that we used for printing before. So that actually, you, we use the same geometry uh, and, and that comes from this uh, also concept of voxels that we use in our software that you can actually voxelize an object, you can process it and you can use it for various processes, uh, either, th either milling or, or printing. And this is this is actually this is beach hardwood. This is yeah. this isn't some some softwood stuff. This is actual usable decent wood. So obviously wood is, is all fine and nice. And you are showing um, just bring that up. You are showing some acrylic cases that, that are actually very decently cut. Can you do metal on the machine? Can you do at least like aluminum? Uh, we theoretically can, but officially we don't support it uh, because it's a difficult process and people have a lot of expectations when you say we're cutting metal. So officially no. Uh, technically. Um, yeah, it's possible, but you would need to do this for your own res responsibility. So this is one of the machines that is set up for, for CNC, and I can I can see a lot of dust in there. Is that a problem for you? Are you having like issues with, with wood dust and, and shavings and contamination and, and bearings? No, not really. The machine was constructed in a way that actually the, all the internal electronics is protected. There's like a uh, compartment for the belt and uh, it's easy to clean uh, with car vacuum cleaner or with any vacuum cleaner. Uh, and it actually doesn't produce that much dust if we uh, talk about engraving. Uh, when we do uh, 3D, 3D milling, actually, that's the thing that produces most uh, dust. But uh, it's, it's all, um, it all can be handled with normal vacuum cleaner. So these are your X carriages, I guess. Um, yeah. And they are quick swappable. You, you've got a laser head and a CNC head. How do you register those? How do you quick swap these? and give the, the CNC head enough rigidity to, to work? Um, actually, this is mounted with a single screw at the beginning and there are some clamps at the back. And this single screw uh, can be tightened to such degree that the whole thing is pretty much uh, well connected with the carriage and it's, and it's rigid enough for milling uh, in wood-like uh, birch. Uh, with laser, it's, uh, we don't need that rigidity but it's still, you know, this system provides it. And now as a demo, I'm gonna swap it from one to the other. Uh, it's pretty easy and straightforward. Uh, it, it takes about half a minute to change one. 
Of course, these don't have cables because they're dummies, uh, but with the cables, it's, it's about 30, 40 seconds to swap one. And you are offering a laser head, a CNC head, alongside the regular 3D printing head. Are you having any safety concerns with either of them? Because obviously the CNC router has a sharp cutting tool and the laser is, is a laser. Um, what's, what's your approach there? For CNC, we have these protective uh, covers here, uh, front and back, so you're safe. I mean, no sharp things will fly towards your eye or something. Uh, with laser, we only sell it with protective glasses that actually are um, uh, filtering the, the wavelength. And we also provide uh, our users with special covers that are uh, just pitch black. For, for, for those areas where you can't get along with, with just using glasses or for like a more public environment, I guess. I use both, actually, uh, to, to be on the safe side. With the extruders, of course, um, it's, it's, uh, there are no safety concerns apart from the heat, uh, but most of the 3D printing enthusiasts know that already. So for the regular 3D printing stuff, you are doing more than just single filaments, which is you know what everybody does. You're doing dual, and you're also doing like triple filaments. What's, what's your, your secret there? Well. Uh, mixture uh, that is, uh, you know, hardware wise, it's, it's, it's not such a big thing. We know there are other uh, machines that have it, but um, I think where we gain some advantage is, is uh, the software. So we can produce things like that. Uh, okay, that's, you know, you can see the color variation happens in Z axis. So that's a, that's a demo of how you can uh, print uh, with color blending and switch filaments in between. Uh, but, you know, it's, yeah, it looks cool. but uh, what's and and it, it looks like you guys have figured out how to get away or uh, how to overcome that, that toothpaste effect where you have you know one filament color on one side of the extruder and, and then the other just on the other. And this, this looks fairly constant, uh, to be honest. Yeah, it's uh, the design of the mixer itself. Uh, you know, we had a lot of prototypes before we got into this current one. And it actually does the job, uh, that's true. Uh, but it, it took a lot of work to actually get to this uh, design. Yeah, but it works. And you're doing up to three filaments. The question is how much of a, of a filament switch over efficiency penalty are you, are you seeing there? Because you, know, you have to prime yeah. the hot end apparently. And with these, so, uh, when, when, when you have a smooth transition, it, it kind of works, I guess. And when, you, when you're just using two distinct materials, you, you do need to switch. So basically for this architectural model, uh, it took about this much filament to uh, ensure that the filament switching is not leaving any um, uh, color bleeding and we have two separate uh, filaments. This can be regulated in our software. It can be more, it can be less. For some models, we can actually get rid of that and not print it because the color, the color transition extrusion can be hidden inside of the model. But uh, it, it only works for models that are pretty unique at the top, because otherwise, uh, when you have a pointy top, there will be not enough space in the model to clean uh, inside. So, so this is a pretty safe bet. Uh, you know, it's still less than the weight of the model, uh, and it produces like, a pretty clean model. And these are obviously, this is a transparent filament for the windows and for the balconies over here, and the rest is just solid white PLA or grayish PLA. I guess this sort of, of color mapping and, and smooth transitions is something that a regular slicer, that the common ones, won't really be able to do. What what are you using to to slice these and to process these? Yeah, I think that's the the key point in here is, is that we use our own slicer called Voxelizer, and it um, represents objects. It translates objects to voxels, and in, that inherently means that um, we can represent various qualities of each point of the model. And we can also have a lot of information about what's inside of the model. And voxels, they allow um, this, this multi-material rep representation. And, and they're sort of you know, like created for multi-materiality. And so it's a natural way to, to go with it. And Leslie, anything planned for the future that you want to share? More attachments, um, crazier software options, anything you've, you've got coming up and, and can talk about? Yeah, well, there, there are uh, something. Of course, we're always working on new tool heads because this system allows us to keep adding tool heads. And, you know, uh, we've maintained compatibility with the machines for the uh, last three years. So, meaning whoever has our old machines will be able to benefit from any new tool head that we are uh, producing. Um, and, yeah, there are some planned for the end of this year and another year. 
I'll talk about this more maybe next time. Uh, we're the, the biggest thing we have in our plans at the moment is that um, um, we're releasing an updated version of our software with uh, different interface because um, because current interface is is quite complex and we know that we got a lot of feedback. We listened to that feedback and we're um, releasing a, a version that is much cleaner. And also it has some upgraded features, like especially those uh, for printing architectural models easily. Sounds awesome. And I, I bet we're going to be seeing more from you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. All right, perfect.